In this video, we're going to be diving into five upcoming indie Souls-like games set to release in the 2024 and 2025 period. The amazing lineup of Souls-likes from 2023 was a surprise to everyone, beginning with Remnant 2, then Blasphemous 2, then Lies of P, and finally Lords of the Fallen, all spaced two months apart. It seems like the genre has finally slowed down from the bi-monthly release pattern we saw last year, but that's not to say that there aren't any interesting games coming soon. In this list, we are looking at the top five upcoming indie Souls-likes expected in the next year or so, which have gone under the radar and why they have caught our attention. So without further ado, let's get into them. Starting off strong, we have a no the last song being developed and published by the Italian studio Jayama Games. The game has been in development for around 3.5 years, set to release this year on both PC via Steam as well as PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S. Anotria is set in a fantasy world which takes inspiration from Italian culture and folklore, throwing players into the fictional land of Atria. The game's narrative and aesthetic draw heavily from the heritage of Italy, offering a fresh take on the typical dark and grim atmosphere Souls-likes tend to have. It almost makes it seem like a summer vacation version of Souls with its vivid sun-drenched settings and joyous atmosphere, particularly evident in Quinta, a city characterized by eternal celebration and felicitous shores. However, we do know that underneath the perceived happiness of the city lies a sinister story. Players will find themselves caught by the Cano Vacho, a twisted eternal play that holds the world in an unnatural stasis. As the maskless one, you are the anomaly in this scripted world, free from predefined roles and poised to challenge the fearsome authors, to liberate Atria from its perpetual stagnation using your magical powers of Ardor, literally meaning passion. It's a very interesting setting that distinguishes it from most other Souls-likes by incorporating a heritage which we don't see too much in the gaming space in general, and integrating a strange story about plays and theater into the unique setting. The Souls-like nature of Anotria has the expected fundamental mechanics such as dodging, rolling basic and heavy attacks, parrying, reposts, and healing. However, instead of mana, we now have the magic of Ardor, a fantastical power that allows players to channel spells, buff themselves, and even alter the environment. You can mold this power to drive your character towards a certain playstyle, from the brute strength of a gut-style warrior wielding massive weapons to the precision of a rogue or the arcane might of a battle mage, or maybe even all of them at once. The distinctive combat feature of Anotria is its theme of masks, which are dropped by powerful enemies. These masks are obviously a thematic addition adding to the whole idea of theater within the game, and they serve as the cornerstone for up to three customizable loadouts, changing the player's set of traits and the set of special abilities they use. For example, the Mask of Change incorporates a heavy playstyle, giving bonus damage for heavy attacks and increasing stamina to dodge as well as attack damage after dodges. Another mask was the Piercing Wit Mask, which buffs your special abilities by adding a bonus effect after you use them. These special abilities are called Mask Lines, and up to four can be equipped at a time. It looks kind of like having four Ashes of War equipped at once. A few we have seen include the Karako Arosa Mask Line, which materializes a blue shield and lance from the Ardore, and the Fatio Luce, a ranged ability which also buffs your weapon, and the Dardo Varashi, which materializes a crossbow. These abilities don't rely on a mana meter, instead charging up from successful hits against enemies encouraging an aggressive playstyle. With each mask, you can also edit the Path of Innovator's skill tree. This allows players to slot talents into masks, allowing for seamless transitions between customized builds and enabling on-the-fly adaption to various enemies or bosses you find. The arsenal of weapons in Anotria features swift sabers and colossal hammers along other weapons, each offering different advantages and styles. Coupled with environmental puzzles using Ardore and the innovative use of masks, Anotria is looking to be another great innovation in the Souls-like space. For those of you who want more intense, stress-relieving violence in their Souls-likes, you might be interested in the next project by developer Neopol and publisher Nexon of Dave the Diver, titled The First Berserker Kassan. This Souls-like is an upcoming high-adrenaline hack-and-slash action RPG. Kazan's story is one of betrayal. The Archmage Ozma and General Kazan are both heroes who felled the mighty berserk dragon Hismar and his brood. However, Kazan is falsely accused of treason and is exiled as an outcast by the very land he swore to protect. He is eventually infused with ominous energies, becoming the first berserker, devoted to revenge against his enemies. As you probably noticed, the game seems to have seen how Dark Souls took a lot of inspiration from the manga masterpiece Berserk and decided to expand on that inspiration by making a whole game surrounding the ideas and themes of the series, from the gore to the eclipse and even the massive hunk of iron we see an antagonist brandish in the trailer. The chosen graphical approach is cel-shaded like AI Limit, but is much darker in tone to reflect the harrowing atmosphere of the game with muted visuals focusing more on the black and red hues, accentuating the color of blood. 
The combat will lean heavily into the hack and slash nature of things thanks to Kazan's massive weapons and his mastery over various weapons, be it dual wielding swords or having an axe in each hand. He will use his skills to carve a bloody path toward his even bloodier revenge on those who wronged him. The game is also touted as an action RPG, promising some RPG elements. Players will be able to collect various pieces of equipment to fully create their own optimized killing machine version of Kazan. The equipment you pick up will all have their unique perks that will expand the build variety you can choose from within the game. There are also going to be character perks and stats along the level system that will let the players customize their playstyles even further. First, Berserker Kazan has been in development for quite some time now and has undergone multiple iterations before the developers were ready to show it off at the Game Awards. There's currently no release date or pricing details available just yet, but we do know that the game will be releasing on PC via Steam, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S consoles. We can also probably guess a 2025 release based on the development time of three years so far. The Relic the First Guardian is an upcoming fast-paced Souls-like being developed by Project Cloud Games and published by Perp Games. Much like Souls, it's set in a ruined land being set in the once prosperous land of Arsiltis, which has been devastated by the destruction of a great relic, transforming it into a land of death roamed by monsters called Brutals. Players will take on the role of the last guardian of Arsiltis, embarking on a heroic adventure to recover the pieces of the shattered relic and close the void that has engulfed the world. The combat shown has been somewhat limited, but did showcase the basis of what to expect. As you expect from the genre, you have basic mechanics like dodging, parrying, and lighter heavy attacks, as well as spells and abilities which can interact with the environment, such as explosive barrels and throwing fireballs and stuff, in the environment to make it fall. A big part of the play styles within combat is defined by the five distinct weapon types within the game, each with their own unique skills and movesets. Shields and one-handed weapons offer very balanced gameplay by integrating both offense and defense as well as a special overhead ability. Long swords have reach and strength without sacrificing any dexterity, alongside a special AoE 360 spin ability making it extremely offensive. Daggers are quick and agile with a noticeably faster attack speed than any other weapon as well as dexterous special moves which integrate jumping and dodging along with a special attack, making for a very fast playstyle not commonly seen in Souls likes. The fourth weapon type are two-handed weapons, colossal weapons, which sacrifice mobility for a stalwart defense and attacks which drain enemy stamina, staggering them. And the last weapon type is the Battle Staff, a magic weapon incorporating physical attacks along with heavy gravity magic, with each physical hit reducing cooldowns of abilities. In terms of progression and how you get stronger with these weapons, you may be relieved to hear that there is no leveling mechanic. Your character will get stronger over time with various runes and items they find, and any useful items or gear you craft. The world and characters don't seem very inspiring at first glance, but the art style and animations do seem to make up for it, offering some unique and flashy animations for every attack, as well as a dark and bleak atmosphere wherever you go, which to me is very important for Souls-like games, which take place in a once prosperous land now fallen to ruin. The Relic the First Guardian is set to release on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X and S in early 2025, so around a year from release of this video. Seems like a very by-the-book Souls-like without many extra features, but it could be what some people need to scratch that Souls-like itch in 2025. AI Limit is a cell-shaded science fiction action Souls-like being developed by Sense Games and published by CE Asia, set to release in 2024 on both PC via Steam and PlayStation 5. It's set to be a post-apocalyptic Souls-like with an anime art style utilizing cell-shading for that classic anime look. AI Limit presents a desolate future where civilization has crumbled, leaving behind a world tainted by an enigmatic substance known as the mud. Roaming the Dark Land are monstrous entities along with survivors who find themselves locked in a struggle for existence. You will play as Orissa, a formidable blader endowed with extraordinary regenerative abilities. She embarks on a series of adventures to unravel the mysteries of the apocalypse while cultivating hope in a forsaken world on the brink of despair. The combat sequences look more fluid and dynamic than what you would think for a Souls-like, with Orisa being armed with an array of weapons and executing dazzling combos while utilizing the unique skills associated with each weapon type. The weapon skill system seems to be the main augment of her arsenal, offering a plethora of attack choices. For instance, her left-hand mechanism is a versatile tool that casts multiple spells. To learn more about the city of Haven's Well, Orisa uses her blader abilities to extract information from scattered artifacts. The city is a treasure trove of knowledge waiting to be uncovered, which gives more context and lore about the past events that led to the fall of civilization. As players embark on the journey, these secrets become an important part of the overall narrative, so it will be somewhat reminiscent of the lore systems found in the original Souls series. 
As you've probably realized, AI Limit's gameplay preview has similarities with Code Vein from their shaded roots in the post-apocalyptic genre, as well as a similar direction and art style. The gritty ambiance, eerie visuals, and the overall atmosphere for survival create some crossover. So if you're a fan of Code Vein, I would definitely recommend keeping an eye out for this upcoming Souls-like. Lastly, we have Flintlock The Siege of Dawn. This game is being developed by A44 Games and published by Kepler Interactive, set to release in Q3 of this year for PC and both previous and next-gen consoles, so PlayStation 4 and Xbox One owners will be able to buy and play the game. This open-world Souls-like is attempting to carve a niche for itself by blending the mechanics of Souls-like games with cinematic storytelling reminiscent of God of War and the amazing exploration of Elden Ring, creating a middle ground between the two. The devs are also aiming for approachability, so it will also feature a possessed mode which makes the game extremely punishing while keeping the default difficulty easier. The game is set in an area inspired by the Napoleonic period and the Mesopotamian deities merging historical elements with fantastical influences. The game world is built around New Zealand's landscapes such as the flora and fauna as well as local features like Pukeko and moa birds to create a relatively fresh environment. The setting in the game's narrative is described as flintlock fantasy which combines elements of black powder technology with old gods and dark magic. In the game's lore, the gods of the world have descended upon the physical realm and released a pestilence on humanity. The central location in the game, the City of Dawn, is described as the origin of the undead populating the world and the new dominion of the gods where humans have been expelled. With the introduction of gunpowder, warfare has evolved, providing humanity with new means to counter gods and magic. Their narrative focuses on humanity's efforts to reclaim the City of Dawn and shut the door to the afterlife to stop the influx of undead. You play as Nora, a woman with a strong conviction against a god who killed her father, fighting alongside her pet Enki to attempt to eliminate the gods for the first time in human history. Flintlock The Siege of Dawn's world is segmented into three major zones, each with secrets and hidden elements across various landscapes, including underground areas, peaks, and castles, all of which are designed to reward curiosity and exploration. Players can impact the game's world through their actions and decisions, unlocking new quests and altering the narrative's course, though whether there are multiple endings is not confirmed as of yet. Alongside exploration, players will be able to recruit NPCs and can offer help in navigating or even assistance in combat. Combat in Flintlock is a blend of the traditional Souls-like elements and a few new features. Players can equip a diverse arsenal using a combination of axes, firearms, and magic, making for a dynamic combat system. Enki, the protagonist's companion, actually plays a very useful role in combat, providing magical support to stun or levitate enemies with ice magic or gravity magic. You'll have three types of skills, powder, steel, and magic, which you can acquire via the skill tree. An example move we saw, which was between the powder and steel trees, was Destructive Descent, an AoE ground slam damaging enemies around Nor. The combat is also great in art style, with flashy effects, decapitations, and also fatalities, which seem to be the only way to actually kill enemies, perhaps taking a page out of God of War's combat. The enemies we've seen so far include lots of undead skeletons and monsters, as well as human knights, angry chocobos, massive spiders, creepy crab monsters, a haunted suit of armor, and more. Overall, the game doesn't look too innovative if we take into account the elements from outside the Souls-like genre as well, but it does seem to be executing quite well, promising a good art style along with a somewhat intriguing story. I'll definitely be keeping you guys up to date on this one. So that wraps up our video on five indie Souls-like games that are coming out over the next year, or year and a half or so. I hope you guys keep an eye on some of these. We'll be obviously be updating you on them as we get more information about them, seeing if they're any good, letting you know what we think, etc. What do you guys think of these games so far? Did you have any of these on your list to keep an eye on? Let us know in the comments below.